this. So uh, there are quite a few design goals here. Yeah? Uh, the first design goal we have is uh, um, to, to make these changes. That is, is to make it easier for developers to get started. Uh, um, allow developers with different skill sets to work on different parts of cloud stack. And give operator the choice to deploy only parts of cloud stack that they want to use. And, and I'll give some more examples of, uh, um, of how that works. Uh, allow cloud stack components to be written in a language other than Java. Uh, and increase deployments availability and maintainability. Yeah. Uh, so our action plan here is to, number one, disaggregate cloud stacks services. That means we're going to break apart, allow the cloud stacks uh, current services into into separate uh, separate services. Uh, uh, clearly differentiate between automation, orchestration, and provisioning, and switch to use using um, well-known frameworks for our, our um, deployments. And allow better composition at the resource layer and change the deployment model for better resiliency. And I'm going to go through each one of them, and what that means. So uh, this aggregating cloud stack. So if you look at cloud stack today, there is a lot of functional layers in cloud stack. Uh, uh, you have the hardware resource management at the very below, uh, because you are able to uh, go into cloud stack and says, I want to add a host and cloud stack would actually uh, uh, deposit a lot of uh, scripts onto that host. Uh, uh, we, we can actually do things like I uh, uh, put a host into maintenance, which means that we will move VMs off that host, uh, put on other VMs, and then and, and then uh, allow you to bring down the host for repairs, and then bring it back up, and and, and we will deploy VMs on that particular host. Uh, so there, there's a lot of um, uh, resource management and stuff that Cloud Stack uh, does. And, and then Cloud Stack also uh, provide a cloud abstraction layer. This is the layer I was talking about earlier, where uh, we, we provide a virtual concepts that other people can build their uh, VMs on top uh, and deploy, uh, build the services on top. Um, uh, and then we also do virtual resource management. Right? We, we manage these VMs. We do VM sync. We have alerts for people. Uh, uh, HA process has uh, a lot of automation there. Um, and then we also provide end user services. Now these are services that are more, more like uh, cloud provider, service provider uh, services, where we package together um, uh, uh, different parts of the service and present it to the user as a class of service. As, um, we also uh, uh, allow you to do uh, more policies, accounts, ACLs, things like that. Uh, and then we also have a presentation layer that um, allows you to do OEMP, a end user, uh, uh, EC2, S3 APIs. So there's, there's a lot of layers in cloud stack, and it all runs into one particular cloud stack, uh, management server. So there, there are some pros and cons about lumping it all into this one um, uh, cloud stack server. Um, the easiest, the pro is, it's very easy for me to write because I know pretty much everything in there. Uh, uh, and it's very easy to deploy because there's only one, one different app, right? I, but there are a lot of cons. So the biggest con is that there are a lot of interdependencies in, this, in, in these layers and it causes reliability problems because we test the entire server as a whole set. And when you test the uh, entire server as a whole set, you, there's a lot of different um, um, var variation of combinations and that you have to test. And, and because of that, then they don't, uh, sometimes they don't get tested, and, and people all outside is actually using them. Um, and we just couldn't get it, we, we just couldn't test all combinations that way. And so what we really need is contracts between these layers and then testing of these contracts to make sure that, 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 that they have up uh, at each layer. Um, the developer skill set has to range from API design all the way down to system level program because sometimes for to implement something, you're doing, you, you are doing um, uh, uh, IP tables, you're doing uh, and, um, other, other things that are at the system level. And not every single person has all those skill sets. 
Uh, and the person who's doing IP tables may not have the same skills to do Java development on, on, on the top. Um, so uh, it goes both ways. Uh, is, um, and then cost as availability and maintainability uh, and suffers uh, because layers with different availability and maintainability are all, all dumped into the same process. So then and if you have to bring down one particular server, uh, layer, uh, you have to bring down all the layers in cost. So that makes it difficult to, to, to maintain. And, 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 and it also means that cost is less available. So, uh, so our action plan, and again, this is only a proposal. Uh, I sent out the proposal today to, to the mail list. Um, again, if you guys are interested, you know, please, please go, go and uh, comment on that proposal. Uh, so the action plan is to divide cost into its functional layers. Um, the first one is cloud engine. And this is where we're going to present the actual data center abstraction layer. Uh, it only does the orchestration portion. Um, and, and it does the provisioning of the physical resources because uh, that's where most of the plugins will be on. Uh, and it's a directory for, for the services that is deployed in, 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 the, in the data center. Um, and, this, and, serv and these services are basically the, the following list. As uh, cloud access, which will, do a, um, which will be the account and directory connectors. As, um, it will have authentication. ACL and governance. Uh, it makes sense for cloud access to be a completely separate service because the data that is in cloud access is, is normally accessible of through, throughout the entire region. And oftentimes the, the provider already has that type of database and you, you just need to connect to it. Um, uh, and then uh, cloud API I will be a, a different service as it will be it, it, it will expose the end user API and UI. And then there's cloud management, which contains the administrative UI, the OAMP API, I, any of the data center automations, and, and then uh, and the management of the physical resources. So we're going to break these guys up into different services so that each one of them can be independent and, and, and yet can also work together to bring a, a larger set of uh, service. So, so what are the properties for uh, cloud stack service? Each one will have their own life cycle. They will have their own independent scaling. And you have to test them independently. And you have to test the contracts between them. Between them. Um, uh, it will be RPC through reliable message queue able to communicate between them. Um, there will be notification through event systems. So uh, if you want to see that a VM is up or down, you just go and attach yourself to this event system and listen to events. And, but then when you want to react to, to an event through CloudStack, then you need to send RPCs to the message queue. Um, uh, and, then, and they should have individual databases. Even though uh, for right now, that's, that, that's planned for further into the future because it's difficult to have a clean break of, of all, the, all, all, all the papers. Uh, so now I, I want to specifically pick against as when you when we looked at cloud engine we said this presents a data center abstraction layer uh, that means it, it has an API of its own um, and cloud API what what is the difference between the two um, today I consider that cloud stack has a mixture of these two APIs in what it presents to the end users uh, as, as, and that mixture is not good for for, for the entire system. And, and I'd like to explain why. Uh, so in the data center abstraction API, they should speak in virtualization terms. Um, so someone was uh, uh, asking me about, uh, oh, what happens when, uh, when their customer has already a, a virtualization block, it's existing, it's on VMware, how do you import it to CloudStack? Well, today, if you import it to CloudStack, you actually have to create a, a set of um, a, a brand new set of virtual machines in, and, and 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 then transport the load. Well, people don't want to do that. But then, and if you don't do that, and you just import into CloudStack, CloudStack starts to impose things that it it, it, it has. So, for example, CloudStack always has service contracts. It always says, oh, the CPU and RAM has to be this big because 
uh, uh, that is in the service offering, and that service offering is tied to the VM. Um, and, and it makes it difficult because when you go with the existing deployments, probably do not do that. They probably have one, one VM has one CPU, it's two, two gigahertz, the other one has three CPU, L, and it's one gigahertz each. And so do you create a service offering for every single combination of the, of the virtual machines we're about to import? Uh, so we cannot do that for, um, with the existing. It, it makes it difficult to, uh, to import. Um, and, and so at the data center abstraction layer, we're going to speak in terms of virtualization terms. Each, each VM has this much CPU, this much RAM, um, um, uh, this much disk space, things like that. It will not be in terms of uh, service to service level contracts. Uh, now, uh, caller can specify the deployment destination all the way down to the host, that, uh, down to the hypervisor that, that you want to deploy to. Uh, it can be used to deploy service VMs. And service VMs is things like console proxy VM that we, we start today, uh, secondary storage VM we start today, virtual router, and maybe VPX for nest data. Uh, th those can all use this framework to deploy uh, the VMs. Um, and it contains uh, orchestration logic. Now, uh, in Cloud API, it's different. Cloud API is trying to make it simpler for the end user to use. Uh, so it will package these things up. That's, that's what we do today. Package them up, up and says, uh, oh, you can only have a high performance computing layer, which is four CPU and 2.2 gigahertz each. Or you have a low uh, computing layer, uh, one CPU, 500 gigahertz. Uh, it will package these things up, up and offer to the end user. Um, Colors can only specify the deployment location through um, resource dedication. Um, so today, caller cannot actually specify where they want to deploy the VM because that's being controlled by the operator. Uh, but it is, Casa does support the functionality that says, I want to dedicate a set of resources to a, to a certain account, and then that account, when they, when they launch uh, VMs, is always in the resources that has been dedicated. Um, so callers can only do that through the Cloud API. I, uh, it will only deploy user VMs, um, and it will contain business logic. And what I, what I mean by business logic is things like checking access, checking governance, as uh, things like that before before deploying VM. Whereas in the data center abstraction API, we do not we do not check this. Thing. You told us to deploy the VM. We will deploy the VM if we have the capacity. There's no there's no checks on whether or not you have you you, you reach. Five, your five VM limits on on um, on, on the deploy. Uh, so that's the key differences between these two type these, these two sets of servers. So one possible future uh, is going to be it's going to look like this. Uh, uh, on the bottom box is the cloud stack cloud engine, the orchestration platform, um, and then there are services that are all deployed uh, around it. Um, uh, ACL is deployed on uh, one set. Uh, all the end user facing, such as the console proxy, and such as data import export service, that's when you download and upload templates and, and snapshots in and out of the data center. Uh, the end user VM management service, the AWS API, I will be deployed I, around on cloud uh, orchestration platform. And they will all use cloud orchestration platform. Um, and then on the right will be the system administration services, any of the automations that, that, that are deployed. Uh, people may decide to dis disaggregate more of the automation and so that they can choose which to use and which to uh, not use. Um, so that, that's one possible future uh, for, for these services. And then and the second thing and we said is to uh, distinguish between the automation, orchestration, and provision. And, and so uh, let's, let's take a look at what, what's the difference. And, and, and the key is this data center abstraction layer I was just talking about. Uh, we present this data center abstraction layer. There's, there's things like virtual machine, template, NIC, IP address, volume, network, rules, any set of the rules, source net, um, uh, static net, firewall, uh, snapshots. Uh, and this is our abstraction layer. Uh, and orchestration really orchestrates within this abstraction layer. Now, what do I mean by that? 
uh, I kind of alluded to it uh, earlier uh, today when I said uh, when you start a VM, you have to make sure the template is there. Um, because, but, so uh, we have to make sure that the all abstraction layers um, uh, objects are in order when it's orchestrated. So that's what Cloud Stack does. Cloud Stack says, oh, I got to make sure this uh, template is there. All right, and then now I'm going to create the volume, and then now I'm going to create the VM based on that uh, based on that volume. Um, provisioning is manifesting like these concepts in the abstraction layer on the physical resource. So we, we kind of um, talked talk about that uh, earlier today too. You know? uh, who does the actual work? Well, that, that that's provisioning, and and who actually did the work of copying the volume or copying the templates from one place to another? That that's provisioning. And, and who actually put, put the firewall rule on the firewall, that's provision. And, and automation is orchestrating above the data center abstraction layer. Um, uh, so for example, the HA process has, is, is actually automation. It's not part of uh, uh, orchestration. Um, so let me, so uh, let me give some examples of this. Uh, so orchestration, um, VM deploy, volume creation, Network creation, network rules, propagation, and, and those are, are part of orchestration, and they, and they will be the property of cloud engine. And, and, and provisioning is starting the actual VM on the hypervisor, uh, right? The actual movement of a volume from one storage pool to another. Uh, that, that's actually provisioning. And, and, and automation is something like HA process. HA process detects through cloud engine, and, and that says, Oh, this VM has been stopped, and then HA process is on top that says, "Oh, I know this VM has been stopped. Well, I've been told this VM has been stopped. Let me go investigate whether or not it actually is stopped. And if it is, I want to restart it." That's an automation above the orchestration. It's, it's not actually part of orchestration, um, and and people can write better things than what Cloudstack can do, um, uh, because we now we present a stable API for people to actually use to start. The to, to restart the VMs. Um, and things like DR process, disaster recovery, are things that you can automate on top of this orchestration. Um, so, so now you can put more and more of these type of orchestration on top of Cloud Stack, uh, so, or, or, or orchestration engine. Now, why is it important to break all of these things down? Um, we already broke down the services. We already said our management service, uh, our management automation, Will be a, a service above Cloud uh, Engine, and um, so why why else do we have to distinguish? Well, it's because Cloud Engine itself is still too big and it requires a lot more work, art, and understanding. And for people who who don't understand uh, storage pools, they they, um, they for people who understand how to do network shouldn't have to understand how storage works. So we need to put that even um, and further down to allow people to do that. Um, so, and the plugin and uh, partners, they need to clear, clearly see the division in the functionality between Cloud Engine and their work. So the idea is that we will disaggregate Cloud Engine itself into, into smaller parts so that partners can add more infrastructure to be utilized in the cloud. Uh, so let's take a look at the components that Cloud Engine has. Uh, it's going to start with orchestration. And uh, there is, once again, the deployment planner because orchestration uses the deployment planner to determine where the virtual machine is going to be. Uh, there's going to be a compute part, which is the hypervisor. Uh, there's the network group who understands what network uh, is on the, uh, what the virtual network is on the physical network. Uh, network elements uh, who provide network services, those we already know. Uh, but then the, the rest uh, are, are new because the storage portion um, was not there before. Uh, so we're going to be able to provide a primary data store, a image service which deals with templates and ISOs, a backlink store which deals with moving snapshots off of primary storage into a backup, um, um, a back, uh, a backup storage like the secondary storage or object store. Uh, and then there will be a motion service that says, oh, I know how to move data between various store storage technologies. If you have iSCSI versus NFS, I know how to move that. And Cloudstack just says, that's all I want to do. I want to move it between these storage pools. You figure out how to do it. Uh, uh, it's not really up to Cloudstack. 
so cloud engine and uh, component properties is, is we, we recommend that, that these guys have independent life cycles, databases, scaling, and testing. <coughs> and they should utilize Cloud uh, Stacks uh, plugins to bridge provisioning needed by Cloud Engine and functionality provided by the components. All APIs must be asynchronous, and operations are item -coded. Um And this would be a disaggregate of Cloud Engine. These would be its components. It was around basically the event bus and database. As, so here they would share the database. As, and you will have a compute subsystem, um, uh, a compute subsystem, network subsystem, network <coughs> services, as, and they would talk to each other about how, how to deploy a VM and, and, and each one of them would be a plugin. And, and there would be uh, uh, there will be orchestration around around those parts. So after that, then and we um, we looked at changing cloud stack deployment model. So I think you've seen this picture quite a few times today. I, um, today, management server is deployed in one data center. It hooks into all, uh, a bunch of other data centers and is replicated onto a data, another data center. Um, uh, and in general, this, this story kind of makes sense uh, for enterprise guys, uh, for people who is used to enterprise deployments. That, that, that's normally what, what, what it looks like. Uh, but there are some um, um, real cons about this. Uh, now the pro is that it's a very simple deployment model. You just uh, back up the database and, and, and you, uh, you switch a load balancer and you can go to a different management server. Uh, and it's very easy to tra track the jobs because you don't have different um, processes, you don't have to go to a different data center to find what happened to the job. Uh, but there are some cons. Now, now, so number one, if the management plane goes down, the entire cloud is not operable. Uh, now, the VMs will still stay up, right? The VM side has been deployed, has to still stay up. But there will be interruption to the provisioning process uh, uh, because the management plane has gone down. Now, maybe it's not even the management plane problem, but uh, uh, but, uh, but the data center that the management plane was in and, and got disconnected. Uh, and during the uh, move to using the backup data center, your system will be unavailable. Uh, so um, so that, that's one con. And then the fault containment is not to one of liability zone. So if you think about the workload that we, we talked about at the very beginning of the, today, we said when you're looking at cloud workloads, uh, the idea is that you duplicate the applications uh, in different zones so that the fault tower fault is contained in that zone and if you need more, you deploy more in different zones. Um, so, right? Uh, the applications is supposed to take care of that. Well, we're the management layer of that and we're, we don't do that. Uh, so uh, uh, when a cloud stack is down, then the management then the fault is not contained to the to, to a certain zone. The entire cloud is down. Um, right? I, now, when I, when I mean down, I mean the control plane is down. It's not that you know, the VMs are still up. Uh, but that, that can happen. Um, and then you cannot do a um, zone by zone roll up of upgrade of cloud stack. Uh, right? You have to upgrade cloud stack as a set. You have to, you know, today you can, you can bring down one particular node in cloud stack and bring it up, up with the new version and then do a rolling upgrade. Right? But that's, that's not ideal because what happens if one particular VM, one particular management server that has been upgraded uh, is, uh, takes a long time. Um, so we need, to, we need to look at it as how can we uh, do upgrades zone by zone and then have the system um, still stay up. And maybe one zone is unavailable uh, during this upgrade. Uh, if there are bugs during the upgrade, maybe that zone is unavailable. But your whole cloud is not is not actually down. Um, and then, so all of these reasons, we cannot guarantee a zero downtime of work uh, because of that. So uh, let's take a look at a new new um, the suggested deployment model. Uh, you would deploy the cloud stack um, cloud engine and into each uh, availability zone. Um, now you can decide to let it handle multiple availability zones, but that's going to be up to you because you you are the one who are, who decides how far your uh, your fault tolerance is. Uh, so it can deploy onto multiple availability zones, but 
but our suggestion would be each of the database room has one car engine. Uh, the database is also deployed into each uh, available zone. Um, and so then when um, the experience would be that you can start up a up, uh, cloud engine in each data, zone, uh, data center zone, and then you start up cloud API as VMs, as different service above, and you point it to the two cloud engines, or the multiple cloud engines. And this cloud API will gather all the data it needs to gather, and then start to participate in the actual request handling and to, to, the, uh, to the end users. Uh, and cloud access, which is, uh, remember, is the ACL portion of this, well, would be a separate us, a service as well, and we can, we can do sync in between in the cell. Uh, and no, notice that the admin console is at the cloud stack cloud engine, and no longer at the cloud API. Uh, today, if you look at it, then cloud stack, because cloud stack has management and, and cloud API all mixed together, the admin console is at, at, at the high level. But now you can have the admin console at each local cloud engine. And, and so let's take a look at, at the properties of, um, of, of good servers, perhaps, right? That there, there's just several things that you have to always look at. Uh, what is the scalability of this, uh, this type of deployment? What is the availability of this type of deployment? And what is the maintainability of this type of deployment? Um, so the first uh, topic, scalability, and cloud API nodes can be bought up and added into a cluster to handle more requests. Whereas cloud engine will have its own cluster, and that cluster will de will scale depending on the resources that is managing. So now what, what we have done is separate the, the incoming request scaling and the um, uh, resource management and scaling into two separate uh, parts. Uh, uh, so uh, they can scale independently. Um, in terms of availability, so, uh, availability uh, cloud API servers can be deployed in geographically remote locations because they don't share databases. They actually contact the management, uh, the cloud engine to grab its database. Uh, and one cloud API server going down will only ex impact the task it, it is executing. And any number of cloud API servers can be brought up. Uh, and cloud engine and cluster going down would mean one zone is down, um, not the entire cloud. Uh, even if the entire cloud API cluster is down, administrators can still manage the VMs by directly connecting to the cloud engine cluster using that main console. So at worst, you can at least still have people send you email and says, stop my VM. My VM is is handling some financial uh, 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 transactions and it needs to be up. You go and start it. They couldn't come go to the cloud API for some reason. Then they can at least give you a call, give you a support call, and have your support uh, uh, started by hand. And that's the ultimate fallback. Uh, and in terms of maintainability, zones can be individually upgraded. Uh, uh, only the zone being upgraded cannot be provisioned because you're, you're upgrading that particular zone. Um, and cloud API I servers can be part of with new versions and then shut down the old, old ones. Um, so uh, while you are upgrading the zones underneath, the API servers actually stay up. And so then you actually have zero downtime. There might be portions of your cloud are down because of the upgrade. You cannot provision that, that cloud. Uh, but when, when, when that is up, then once again, it becomes um, available. Uh, but your end user wouldn't be sitting there looking at a 404 or 500 uh, on, on, on the files. So that's the proposal. Any questions? Any comments on the proposal? ま、
かる場合もそのあると思,う思,思いますので、まあ、何かいいプロポーザルなんかがあれば、まあ、コントリビューションという形になると思うんですけどもあの話あの、まあ、こういわゆるメールメ,メールベースなんかでも、えっとまあ、ディスカッションしたりしていただければと思います。えっと、あの最後の方に書いてた提案のところの複数の,あのアベラビリゾーンにまたがって一応あのいろいろあのえ、えー、とクラウドエンジンを複数買ってやりましょうという話だったと思うんですけどもど,どちらにあの自分が投げるかっていうもう一つ上のそこの要はなんか、えー、となんてロードバランスじゃないですけどなんかそういうどっち側に行くのっていうポリシーの話とか。メンテナンスも例えばそのゾーンのメンテナンスをやってるやる前に例えば他のゾーンにこうやって動かしてあげなきゃいけないとかってそういうことがあると思うんですけども、えっと、そういうあそうですねその上の,あの GSLB っていうやつがまあそれがあのシングルフライアウトポイントになりかねないと思うんですよねでそういうことについては今どういうふうに考えてそう、私は GSLB、それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に可能なことを行うことができます。それは実際に Uh, so, that type of deployment is really kind of up to the cloud operator on what they want to do. Uh, what they want to do. Uh, um, the, the idea mainly here is that、uh, the number of deployments you can do is on the cloud API is, is not a one to one to the cloud engine underneath. Because here you scale these according to the incoming requests and also where you want to put your. your Your,、um, your entry points for, for, for your service. Here, these guys are local to and、uh, in the, in, inside the、uh, data center to,、uh, to the resources. Cloud API is a lot of load balancing. You have to be able to do it. I think it's a lot of load balancing. Uh, yes, I mean, this, this is definitely low balancing at the API level.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 M
fine. There, there's no there's no problems there. Versus whereas today, if you had a problem, so let's say you were doing update, and and for some reason, there there is a big problem with this update. You know, something didn't get tested, uh, something, right? Uh, today, when that happens, because this layer is one single set, uh, then the whole system comes down. Um, whereas then, uh, at that point, uh, you can actually just uh, say, well, this song is right now inoperable. Oh, oh, we, can't hand, um, we can't handle it for you. Oh, oh, but all the other uh, things are actually still running and just fine. Um, and you can deal with the problems here in this song. Um, and when, once you figure it out, then you attach it back to back to those guys. Uh, and now the other problem also is that when you when you're considering uh, handling hundreds and thousands of machines across multiple availability zones, you don't want them one one problem to bring the, bring down all of those guys, right? So here, let's say there's three thousand machines here, there's three thousand machines here, and and and, and, we, and we keep going on the data centers. Uh, there's ten data centers, three thousand machines each. Yes, this only affects a small portion of your data, your, your, your machines. And and once you learn the problems, um, you can you can fix it. And then when you roll it, roll, uh, when you do rolling updates on this guy, uh, this guy can 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 learn from the problems that you have in the first. Update. Okay. So data center is one of the thousand thousand machines that are. ラウドエンジンが動いて止まっても動いてるのは分かるんですけどコントロールはできないんですよ、その3000台のという一つになったと思うんですけど、そのラウドエンジンですかあ、確かにそうすると、その、ダウンしてる間、コントロールできないと、
at the, at the worst of class time, we cannot do worse than that. And today we are worse than that. えっと、その、スイッチ、えっと、見えないんだけど、今のだ構成だと、あの、隣のH2のエンジンが、H1ので作ったVMをコントロールするというふうなことはできないんですよね。So, yes, in today's case, you cannot, um, we're not planning on the, the engine here controlling the VMs here. Um, but it's a different, this, this is a different un, un, um, question, I think. And what you are talking about is saying, for some reason, this is down, import those VMs into, into here, uh, and let, let this control it. Uh, that, that, that's perfectly fine. You can add services. You can add automation that does that, that service. That, that's fine. Cloud, so, uh, but here, what we are talking about is how to, where to contain a fault, uh, where, so that it does not expand on out from where the fault is. Uh, so uh, today, uh, if you talk about management server in only one particular zone, and if that zone, the edge service on that zone is gone, then that management server cannot contain any, can, cannot manage anything. And in here, they, they, they still can. So I think we're talking about two separate problems here. Uh, you're, you're giving a suggestion on what more we can do, uh, which I agree with. But here, we are trying to get, make sure that we do not get worse than, 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 than the problem of the, day, the entire zone is gone. はい、わかりました。問題の捉え方をもうちょっとちゃんと整理してやった方がいいということですね。非常によく分かりました。すみません。えっと、この分非常にあのえっといいと思っていて、あのちょっとすみません一つだけ質問があって、このアカウントデータ
uh, to make sure that we no longer have that contradiction. <laughs> so I think what you're asking, um, make sure I, I get it right, is that when the management server is down, you can, for VMware, for example, you can still use vCenter to control the VMs. And for Sense Server, you can use Sense Center to go control the VMs. And then when cloud stack comes up, what happens? Does cloud stack have, have problem with uh, uh, someone doing things while it's down? Um, and today, cloud stack does have that problem, especially with Sense Server. Our, uh, we are making a change in our code such that we no longer do syncing of VMs. Syncing <coughs> implies a two-way communication between the Sense Server and the management server. And we try to equalize them. Um, instead, what we're going to do is look at the sense server, our database, and says, oh, this is the database of truth. If you say the VM was down, it's, it's now down, then I'm just going to reflect it in my database that it's down. We, we will not go and try to solve it. Uh, if you say the, manager, uh, the VM is now uh, uh, running for some reason, then we're going to say, oh, the VM is, uh, is running, and we're not going to stop it uh, based on our previous state. Um, I'm okay with it.